our next speaker is one of these exceedingly rare uh, phenomenon, and that is to say, a professor at a university who is on our side of things. Uh, professor Lydia Ortega, who is now serving in her third term as the chairwoman of the Department of Economics at San Jose State University, so she's local, where she's been teaching since 1989, is going to talk to us today about economics and free market stuff. Um, obviously, uh, her area of expertise is economics, but San Jose State is lucky to have an entire group of professors, and it's really kind of a surprise, but they're there, dedicated to the free market. Dr. Ortega has been publishing and her research interests include industrial organization and political economy and the economics of education, particularly critical thinking and problem solving in economics. This stuff sounds very dry, but there's some very important things that are based on this and uh, this is key really to how we need to see economics as well. So we're very pleased to have uh, Professor Ortega here with us today. Uh, she's a repeat speaker from last year. Last year. Uh, and so she has uh, been active in providing economic information to the public through appearances like this, the public affairs panels, she's on local radio and news reports. She's a founding member of several uh, local community-based organizations, including the Hispanic Foundation of Silicon Valley and the Mount Hamilton Society, which is a local group of business people who gather to discuss economics. And so, Professor Ortega, if you would. So the Department of Economics at San Jose State University is the only free market economics department on the West Coast. That's a secret, but maybe no longer. I'm so happy to be here. Last year, I talked about the rule of law. And today I'm going to give you another economics lesson in 15 minutes or less. And it's about a topic that's equally dear, near and dear to my heart. It's something that we do every day. It's something that we do many, many times a day. But because it's so familiar, we tend to disregard it, disrespect it, and not really appreciate the benefits of our system. So I'm gonna talk about exchange. You do it all the time, folks. Let's think about, and I hope that in this beautiful weather, windy as it is, I hope I can reawaken in you an appreciation for the benefits, for the amazing <laughs> gifts that we receive because of this process called exchange. Let's think about it. When two people get together and they make a trade, that trade is based on the fact that I'm going to give up something that I value less and you are wanting to give up something that you value less in exchange for something that you value more. So this little simple process where we get together and make a trade means that resources, scarce resources, go to their highest valued use. One of the benefits we get from exchange is that scarce resources are not wasted. They get allocated right away to their highest valued use. An amazing system. Another outcome that we get from exchange, well, when I say exchange, I'm not saying voluntary exchange because that's kind of redundant. When you'd have a trade taking place and it wasn't voluntary, that's theft, okay? So all exchange that I'm talking about is voluntary. And when you get two people together, or two or more, and they make a voluntary transaction, it means it's mutually beneficial. All right, sometimes you say, wait a minute, I didn't like the exchange I made, I have regrets. But at the time you made it, with the information you had, you did it because you expect it to be better off. Agreed? Okay, so the problem there is that only you know what it is you value and what you may value more and how much less and how much more. Nobody else can come and make those exchanges for you and have the same beneficial outcomes. Agreed? Okay. So from exchange, we get the amazing resource allocation. We get mutually beneficial traits. Both people are happier. It's a, it's amazing. No one could have planned this. No one can organize this. But the third benefit we get from exchange is even greater. And that's the one that you're neglecting every day. 
That's the benefit called specialization. There are people who all they do all day long is practice kicking a ball through two upright posts. What are those people called? Field goal football people, right? But specifically, the field goal kickers, okay? That guy makes a really good living specializing in kicking a ball through two upright posts because he can exchange for food, because he can exchange for housing and cars and everything else. If we did not have exchange, we would call such a person a village idiot and he wouldn't be around for very long. Think about the last time you were in awe of the great benefits of specialization. When was the last time you gave thanks because you didn't have to go hunt your food and kill it and do all those other things to it? I don't count hunting for a parking space at Safeway, okay? <laughs> We're not talking about finding the best cut of beef already pre-marinated, okay? But you get that because we have specialization. You guys, are forgetting every day how much better our lives are because exchange leads to specialization. You can get your car's oil changed at Jiffy Loop, just the oil change. And you know what? We don't have to go to Jiffy Loop to get our teeth pulled. When we go to get a dentist to get our teeth pulled, they give us not a shot of whiskey, but Novocaine. Novocaine. Are you guys not appreciative of Novocaine? Can, can I get an amen for Novocaine? I love it. Alfred Einhardt, the German chemist, invented Novocaine because of specialization, because he could exchange for the other things that he wants. It's wondrous indeed. Don't take it for granted. So, I'm an economist, I'm a professor, there's got to be an exam question. Here it is. When you make an exchange, what is it that you exchange? Time? No. Something of lesser value, I heard goods and services. That's not it, folks. What? Energy. Yeah, on a, on a bio, biological level, I would say energy. Okay. Knowledge. Knowledge. Fundamentally, you engage in exchange because you receive, you trade for a set of property rights. Think of every transaction that you've made. The more well-defined your right to determine how to use it, who uses it, to sell it or destroy it, the more enforceable those rights, the greater the value of the transaction. Suppose indeed that you had weak or incomplete property rights. How much would any transaction be worth? I just bought a cup of coffee. I gave them property rights over my dollar in exchange for the coffee because I got to determine who drank it, to destroy it, to throw it away, if I wanted to or not. Think about the transactions you made. You are always exchanging for property rights. Uh-uh. What about labor? When you go to work, are you doing a transaction in property rights? Yes? No? It's a test question here. Yeah, but it's not a complete transaction in property rights. You don't give them the right to sell you or destroy you, although some work is like that, okay? You give them a set of rights that are constrained by the hours and by agreed upon task. Every transaction is a set, an exchange of property rights. And if you think about this fundamental element of property rights, you'll have a greater appreciation for what happens when rules and laws weaken either the enforcement or the definition of what you can exchange in property rights. Think about what Richard Epstein says, that your rights are not absolute chunky pieces, 
They're like this bundle of straws, a collection. And when you lose them, you don't lose them all at once. You lose them one straw at a time because you're not watching, because you're not paying attention when people tell you you don't have the right to put your fireplace on during certain days, when people tell you you don't have the right to pick the kind of health care that you want, when people tell you that you don't have the right to use a plastic bag that you want, one right at a time. until the whole bundle falls apart. We have to be vigilant because without well-defined and enforceable property rights, there will be no exchange. You would trade for nothing. You would just take it if it wasn't a well-defined and enforceable property right. There would be no specialization, no Novocaine, no next best invention. So folks, I want to leave you with a thought about this little bundle of straw that came from my broom, which I had the property rights to destroy. <laughs> I want you to remember every single time that a legislation, legislator proposes a regulation, is it enhancing your property rights or is it diminishing your choice set? Thank you for your time. If you have a student or you know somebody young who's going to college and you want to give them some advice or let them understand about the Department of Economics at San Jose State, send me an email and I will send you a color PDF about why uh, going and majoring in economics at San Jose State grade is just fantastic. My email is my name, Lydia.Ortega at sjsu.edu. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Professor Ortega. A big round of applause for Professor Ortega. We're very pleased to have her again this year. Thank you.